Let's go ahead and take a look at graphing a sketch of the secant function. So let's take a look at the equation y equals 2 times the secant of 3x. So the first thing we need to remember here is that secant is really just the reciprocal of cosine. So what we're looking at the graph here is really going to end up being 1 over 2 times the cosine of 3x. So what we need to really start out by doing is graphing this 2 times the cosine of 3x. So let's go ahead and get started by doing that. Let's go ahead and calculate the period. We know that the period is simply equal to 2 pi over 3, 2 pi over b, and in this case our b is 3. And we don't need to reduce it down, that's simply our period. So let's go ahead and set up our x-axis here. Uh, I'm going to set it up here. We're actually going to do two full periods of this sketched out, one to the right of the y-axis, and we'll continue it out to the left and do one, out, one period out in the negative x-axis. So to set this up here, we'll set our 2 pi over 3 out here. Again, we know all of our critical points for sine and cosine kind of happen at the quarter values. So cutting that in half would be 1 pi over 3. And then cutting that in half again would be pi over 6. And then working that out to the right here, we'll see pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6. Well, that just reduces down to pi over 2. And then we can label our negative axis likewise. So negative pi over 6, negative pi over 3 negative pi over 2 and negative 2 pi over 3. So we've got our axis set up here for one full period. We can see our amplitude since our a is 2 our amplitude will be 2. So we'll make sure we label our y-axis so that it can carry it up to 2. And of course down to negative 2. In this problem, we don't have any phase shifts, so we don't have to worry about leaving any extra room to the left or right to move our graph. We don't have any vertical shifts, so we don't have to worry about drawing in a midline or making sure our y-axis has enough room for our graph. We're just going to start right here in the middle and work our way out. So again, we're going to start with our sketch of cosine. Cosine starts at a maximum, and then we we'll go down to the intercept, down to a minimum, up to an intercept, up to a maximum. And then this pattern will kind of continue out to the other way. So going to the left of the y-axis from our maximum, we go down to the intercept, down to a minimum, and then work our way back up to a maximum here. And then from here, we can simply connect up our graph to give it that cosine wave that we're used to seeing. Now keep in mind here, this is not our final product, right? We're looking at the graph secant. We just needed to use this cosine in order to get our graph of secant. From here, we should remember that the asymptotes for our secant function should be appearing right here at any intercept value. Since cosine value at this point is 0, 1 over 0, or 1 over our cosine value at pi over 6 and pi over 2, would just be undefined. And if it's undefined, we're going to end up with an asymptote there. Go back and fix these so they're actually where they're supposed to be. Okay, and then the way I kind of remember it here is that to get our secant graph, we're going to look at the maximums and the minimums of our cosine, and it's going to start at the maximum and it's going to work its way up, kind of coming ever so close to our asymptote, never crossing it, and it's kind of uh, contained between our two asymptotes here. We can start down at the minimum and again work our way down being contained by the asymptotes never crossing over and this pattern will kind of repeat as long as your cosine graph repeats and this is basically all we need to get our sketch of our cosine and our secant function with a period of 2 pi over 3 and an amplitude of 2